As millions of tourists and Florida residents can tell you, Florida's 770 miles of Gulf Coast offers some of the most beautiful beaches in the entire U.S. And on this channel, we've taken you to many of them. But in between the sandy beach line coast of Southwest Florida and the Panhandle lies a far lesser known stretch of Gulf Coastline known as the Nature Coast. Stretching across eight counties and over 200 miles of coastline, the Nature Coast may not be as popular among tourists, but those who have visited know it has much to offer. So in this video, we'll be showing you some of the best places to visit and things to do in this amazing and often overlooked area. Our first stop takes us to the south tip of the Nature Coast, where you'll find Ancloak Key. The majority of this island lies within Pasco County and can only be accessed via boat or ferry from nearby Tarpon Springs. If you don't have your own boat, we'd recommend visiting Ancloak Key via the Odyssey Tour, which will give you a ride to the island while also providing you with lots of interesting information about the island and its surrounding waters along the way. Once on the island, you'll be provided with a bucket to take home some of the beautiful shells that can be found on the beach. But if you're like us, you may prefer to spend your time on Ancloak Key relaxing on the white sandy beach and swimming in the turquoise waters. So while the Florida Nature Coast may not be known for its white sandy beaches, we found the beach on Ancloak Key to rival the beauty of any other beach that Florida has to offer. Our next stop takes us around 30 miles up the Gulf Coast where you'll find Wikiwachi Springs State Park. The park is perhaps most well known for its mermaid show, admission to which is included in the $13 park entry price. Visitors to the mermaid show will likely find themselves impressed with the performer's incredible abilities to perform underwater feats, including synchronized swimming, dancing, and even eating and drinking underwater. We were surprised to find the show to also be very educational, providing a history of the springs and some of its famous visitors, as well as what we can do to help preserve the threatened ecosystem. In addition to the mermaid show, guests at Wikiwachi State Park will find a nice beach situated along the Wikiwachi Head Spring, which pumps out around 100 million gallons of fresh water each day and maintains a year-round temperature of around 74 degrees. The crystal clear waters offer visitors good snorkeling and a great place to cool off. Another attraction of the park is Buccaneer Bay, a water park with four water slides. The park was closed during our visit, but will be back open in spring of 2022. Entrance to the water park is included in the price of admission. Nature lovers will also find plenty to see at Wikiwachi State Park, including the beautiful Tranquility Trail, an educational discovery center, where we found a baby turtle, baby alligator, and some colorful corn snakes. Visitors can also spot several colorful peacocks roaming the property, and perhaps even a super cute baby peacock. But if you truly want to experience the beauty of Wikiwachi State Park, we'd highly recommend paddling down the Wikiwachi River. This 12-mile river flows from the Wikiwachi Head Spring west to the Gulf of Mexico. Once on the river, you'll soon see why the crystal clear waters and high manatee population make it one of Florida's most popular paddling destinations. Most paddlers choose to begin their paddle at the Wikiwachi State Park. Here you can rent a paddleboard or kayak paddle downstream for 2.8 miles, and be picked up and even taken back to the park for $32. For only $6, you can also launch your own vessel at the state park. Those who are interested in more of a challenge can launch their vessel five miles downstream at Rogers County Park. From here, you'll find a challenging paddle upstream to the head spring, followed by a relaxing downstream paddle back to the park. Regardless of which route you take, we do highly recommend bringing lots of bug spray as the yellow flies along the river can be very thick at times and leave some extremely itchy bites. Our next stop takes us another 20 miles up the Gulf Coast to Homosassa Springs. Here, visitors will find the Homosassa Springs Wildlife Park, a wonderful spot to experience an array of Florida wildlife. 
For those of you who enjoy nature trails, we'd recommend parking at the east entrance and making your way westward down the scenic Pepper Creek Trail. After a relaxing 20-minute walk, visitors will find themselves at the entrance to the wildlife park, where for an entrance fee of just $13 per adult and $5 per child, visitors can spend hours exploring the 210-acre facility. Visitors to the park will find a variety of native Florida wildlife, plus a few non-natives, such as this kookaburra, and the famous 60-year-old hippo named Lou. A few of our favorites at the park were the owls, pelicans, flamingos, black bear, bobcats, alligators, and of course, the manatees. Visitors will also find that this park gives you an incredible glimpse into the clear Homosassa spring water at the underwater observatory. After an adventurous day at the park, you'll likely be ready for dinner and maybe some drinks as well. And for that, we'd recommend heading just a few minutes southwest to Crump's Landing. Here you'll find a massive waterfront tiki bar, a chill tropical vibe, and some amazing food and drinks. Our next stop takes us less than 10 miles to the north where you'll find Crystal River, Florida. Perhaps the most popular spot in the entire nature coast, Crystal River offers a charming old Florida feel with some great spots for shopping, drinking, and dining. Visitors can also find one of the nature coast's better beaches nearby at the Fort Island Gulf Beach. And if you're looking to stay a little more active on your vacation, you can also find beautiful trails at the Fort Island Gulf Beach as well as the Crosstown Trail, which runs through the center of Crystal River. But the biggest draw to Crystal River has to be its springs, and the residents of those springs in particular. We're talking about the manatees, of course, over 500 of which make Crystal River their home during the winter months. And those who wish to have a manatee encounter will have a couple of great options to do just that. The first of these options is to paddle to Three Sisters Springs, a fun and inexpensive option for anyone with kayaking or paddleboarding experience. We'd recommend beginning your paddle at Hunter Springs Park, where paddlers can easily launch their own kayak or paddleboard, or one which can be rented just a few blocks away. The paddle will take around 20 to 30 minutes at a leisurely pace, but could easily take longer if battling rough waters or a headwind. We found the paddle to the springs to be quite relaxing on a calm day, but quite intense on a windy one, so be sure to check the forecast before planning your paddle. Once you arrive at the spring, you'll likely find the waters to be calm and clear, even on a windy day. And while you'll be less likely to spot a manatee in the springs during the warmer months, you can still enjoy snorkeling with the fish in the cool and refreshing spring water. If you visit Three Sisters from November 15th through March 31st, you will be much more likely to spot a manatee. But keep in mind that you'll only be permitted to access the springs by swimming in, as no crafts of any type are allowed in the springs during this time. And if you're like us and don't spot a manatee in the springs during your summer visit, you still might spot one in the river during your paddle to and from the springs. The second option to experience these gentle creatures is by booking a manatee tour and while this option is certainly a bit more expensive, in our opinion, it's totally worth it. We booked our manatee tour in early December with the Plantation Adventure Center. And while the 43 degree temperatures initially had us dreading getting into the water, we soon found that the cold weather was a blessing in disguise. Once we arrived at the King Springs snorkeling spot, we soon found out that the cold temperatures caused the springs to be even more popular among the manatees than normal. And once in the water, we found ourselves surrounded by the curious creatures. While the spring water was a cool 73 degrees, the warm wetsuits and amazing experience kept us in the water for the majority of the three hour excursion. Once back on the boat, you'll be provided with dry towels and hot coffee to help you warm up on a chilly Florida day. If you'd prefer to experience the manatees from a not quite so close and personal distance, you can also book a manatee tour that does not involve getting in the water. If you'd like to see more of our experience paddling and snorkeling with manatees and exploring Crystal River, then check out our Crystal River playlist next. 
Our next can't miss stop on the Nature Coast takes us another hour up the Gulf Coast to Cedar Key. Visitors to Cedar Key will find that just a single road leads to the island, which takes you through miles of mostly uninhabited Florida wilderness. We found the island's location to give it an isolated and quiet feel, a refreshing change from the more touristy Florida beach towns that line the Gulf Coast. Cedar Key visitors may also find that the island community feels much more like an old, quiet fishing village than a touristy beach town. In fact, Cedar Key is the second oldest town in all of Florida, having been founded way back in 1842. But just because Cedar Key isn't as touristy as most other Florida Gulf Front towns doesn't mean you can't find some amazing options for food and drink here. If you're a fan of shellfish, you won't find them any fresher than on Cedar Key, where restaurants such as Steamers serve up delicious local Cedar Key clams. And if you're a fan of tiki bars like us, you can't miss the Hideaway Tiki Bar, which makes one of the best Bloody Marys we've ever had, and also offers a one-of-a-kind atmosphere and amazing sunset views. Our next Nature Coast stop takes us 40 minutes north to Manatee Springs, one of Florida's hundreds of freshwater springs, and another popular spot for paddling and manatee sightings. Like Three Sister Springs to the south, manatee sightings at Manatee Springs are far more common in the cooler winter months. But the cool spring water will without a doubt feel more refreshing in the summer. And if you're like us and don't actually see a manatee on your summer trip to Manatee Springs, you'll still likely spot some other Florida wildlife in the springs or the nearby Suwannee River. On our trip, these encounters included hundreds of fish in the springs, a water snake near the springs, and an alligator in the river. If you love these beautiful freshwater springs as much as we do, you'll be in luck as Florida is home to hundreds of them. And while not technically located within the nature coast, some of our favorite Florida springs can be found just a bit inland, including Itchtuckney Springs, Poe Springs, and Rainbow Springs. Want to see even more of the best things to do in and around the Florida Nature Coast? Then go ahead and click on our Nature Coast playlist right now. Thanks for watching!